after receiving the money you'll record this 1800 in cash book in cash book you'll record only after the transaction has taken place that means either cash should come in or cash goes out balance of all the ledger is right in the bookkeeping worksheet called trial balance it should be equal all the debit and credit items should be equal in profit and loss account you'll consider all the revenue all the income and expenses and cost in the financial year hello everyone i am megana from the department of commerce lecturing in vidyashram first grade college the temple of excellence we are in the session 9 of unit 1 subject accounting in the last class we have discussed about three column cash book subsidiary book we solved one problem on three column cash book let us continue with the three column cash book and one more problem on three column cash book let us see the problem from the following particulars make a cash book of fatima trading company for the month of november 2016 cash balance credit here cash balance shows credit side that means credit balance 2000 and bank balance 40000 here for this bank balance they have not mentioned either credit balance or debit balance usually cash and bank balance will consider it as a debit balance but here for cash particularly they have mentioned credit so we consider it as a credit side and this by default will consider it as a debit balance so this is the balance brought down for, from the last month so this is the balance brought down credit side and this is for the debit side so this is payment side will record payment side and this bank balance will record in receipt side next cash sales 3700 cash sales this is the receipt so write in the receipt side that is debit side and credit sale 1800 would be received at near future that means this credit sales now you are not going to receive at present at the time of sale you are not going to receive any money but you are going to receive in near future so here in no cash coming or cash going out no cash transaction at present so we will not consider this 1800 after receiving the money you will record this 1800 in cash book in cash book you will record only after the transaction has taken place that means either cash should come in or cash goes out will not consider this 1800 at present next paid to ankit and brothers by cash 500 that means this is one transaction paid to ankit and brothers by cash here cash in cash column in three column cash book we have cash bank and discount so here cash is going out you are paying through cash so amount should be write in the cash column here you are paid that means payment side payment side credit side by ankit and brothers 1500 in cash column again received cash by data 1800 received that means receipt received cash so amount in the cash column by data 1800 this 1800 is a earlier transaction of credit sale so it says would be received in near future in near future you are going to receive so on 6th you will receive the money for the fourth transaction on november 4th you made a credit sale that amount you are receiving in november 6th so this is the receipt side will record in the cash column next paid to vendor by means of check worth rupees 2700 payment so write in the payment side that is credit side paid by means of check so amount in the bank column check means in the bank column next paid utility bill in cash payment payment utility bill in cash amount in cash column next bought goods by check rupees 750 purchase of goods by check purchase means payment cash is going out through check so amount in bank column next draw from bank for the office use you are withdrawing cash from the bank for the office use here you will withdraw the cash but not at use so cash withdrawal from the bank the transaction between cash and bank so it considered as contra entry contra entry once you will consider in the payment side and again in the receipt side so two transaction one for cash and 
another one for bank transaction you will record in cash book next personal withdrawal personal withdrawal of cash rupees 1000 you will withdraw from the bank for the personal purpose any withdrawal any assets taken for the personal purpose is considered as a drawings so drawing account data drawing account data to bank account so this is the payment so write in the payment side bank column amount rupees 1000 again received a check from harish 2700 and deposit into the bank here you will receive receipt write in the receipt side received from harish a check received from harish and deposit into the bank so soon after receiving the check you are going to deposit in the bank so amount should be written in the bank column amount in the bank column next received by check from munir 1360 discount 140 not deposited that means you will receive check from munir but not a deposit in the bank and you allow him a discount of rupees 140 here this is the receipt right in the receipt side you will receive the check but not a deposited. So, if you are not a deposited means amount should be written in cash column. So, receiving check is equal to cash received but you are not a deposit into the bank. So, consider it as a cash received. So, amount in the cash column. Again, in the discount column, you allowed a discount. So, discount rupees 140 in the discount column. Next, cash sales 2100. Payment side. In cash column, amount 2100 and paid wages by bank. Paid wages by bank means amount in bank column. Payment, payment side, that is credit side, bank column 1500. Deposited Munir's check into bank. Now you are going to deposit the Munir's check which you have received in on November 21st. This is the transaction between you are going to deposit into the bank. So, bank and cash transaction so bank and cash transaction is a contra entry contra entry you will record once in a so receipt side and again in payment side one for cash transaction and another for bank transaction two transaction you will record in cash book next payment by check to anupama for rupees 175 payment so write in the payment side check paid through check so, amount in bank column to Anupama rupees 175. Again, discount received 25. So, amount in the discount column. Bank column 175 and discount column 25. Next, Munir's check has been dishonored and written by bank. So, here the Munir's check is dishonored and written by bank. So, dishonored account data to bank account. Dishonor account data to bank account credit side that is payment side amount in bank column amount is 1360 Munir's check is rupees 1360 so for this transaction 30th transaction amount is 1360 so let us start with the problem just post them in a cash book First consider cash balance credit 2000 and bank balance 40,000. So, to balance brought down 40,000 by balance brought down 2000. November 1st. To balance brought down bank column. 40,000. Again, on the same date, November 1st, by balance brought down, by balance brought down, cash balance shows credit side. So, write in the credit side cash rupees 2,000. Next, cash sales 3,700. Receipt side, two sales 3,700 amount in Cash column, November 4th, to sales, amount in cash column, 3,000, 
700. Two sales, amount 3700 in cash column. Next, paid Ankit and Brothers by cash rupees 500. Payment side, by Ankit and Brothers in cash column amount rupees 500. November 6th, by Ankit and Brothers. By Ankit and Brothers, amount rupees 500 in cash column. 500 cash column. Next, received cash by data 1800. Received side, two data account rupees 1800. November 6, two data. Two data 1800 in Cash column. Next, November 12th, paid to vendors by means of check worth rupees 2700. Payment side by vendors account 2700 amount in bank column. November 12th, by vendors account 2700 amount in bank column paid through check next paid utility bill paid utility bill in cash 250 payment side by utility bill account 250 amount in cash column november 13 by utility bill account Utility bill account amount in cash column rupees 250. 250. Next, bought goods by check 750. Purchase of goods by check rupees 750. By purchase account amount in bank column rupees 750. November 13. By purchase account, mountain bank column rupees 750. Next, drew from bank for the office use 160. First, general entry for withdrawal of cash is cash account data to cash account data to bank account first consider cash transaction cash is credited so write in the cash is debited write in the debit side to bank account to bank account amount in cash column rupees 160 november 19 to Bank account within bracket right C. That means contra entry amount in cash column 160. Next, consider bank. Bank is credited. So, write in the credit side by cash account amount in bank column. Amount in bank column. November 19. By cash account. By cash account within bracket right C. That means contra entry amount in bank column rupees 160. Rupees 160. So this over. Next, personal withdrawal of cash for rupees 1000. Personal withdrawal means drawing account data to bank account. So payment side by drawings account amount in bank column rupees 1000. Same date, November 19. By by drawings account amount in bank column rupees one thousand. So next twentieth received a check from Harish two thousand seven hundred and deposit into bank. So receipt side by to Harish account amount in bank column two thousand seven hundred. November 20th 
November 20 to Harish account. To Harish account, 2700 amount in bank column. 2700. Next, received by check from Munir 1360 and discount rupees 140 not deposited. So that means received, receipt side to Munir account. 1360 amount in cash column even though you will receive the check but not deposited. So write amount in the cash column 1360 and discount column 140. November 21st to Munir account to Munir account 1360 amount in cash column. And discount column 140. Next, 25th. Cash sales 2100. Right in the receipt side. This is receipt and this is payment. Cash sales, receipt side, amount in cash column 2100. To sales account. Now, number 25. To Sales account, amount in cash column 2100, 2100. Next, paid wages by bank rupees 1500. Payment side, by wages, amount in bank column 1500. November 25. November 25, by wages account. By wages account, amount in bank column, rupees 1500, 1500. So now write the journal entry for depositing check into bank. Journal entry, bank account data to, bank account data to, cash account. First consider, Bank account. Bank account is debited. So, write in the debit side to cash account. Amount in bank column. You will receive the check from Munir for rupees 1360. So, write to cash account. Amount in bank column 1360. 28. November 28. To cash account. Right. C, contra entry, amount in bank column, 1360. Next, consider cash. Here cash is credited, so write in the credit side, by bank account, by bank account rupees, 1360. November 28, by bank account, write C, contra entry, Amount in cash column 1360. 28 over. Next 29. Paid payment by check to Anupama for rupees 175 and discount received 25. Payment. So write in the payment side by Anupama account bank column rupees 175 and discount column 25. You will receive the discount. So discount column 25 and bank column 175. November 29. By Anupama account, amount in bank column 175 and discount 25. Next, last November 30th, Munir's check has been dishonored and returned by bank. So, entry for dishonor of check is dishonor account data to bank account. Just transfer into cash book. Bank is credited. So, write in the credit side by dishonor account amount in bank column. November 30th, by dishonor account, amount in bank column 1360, share, 
we record all the transaction in cash book so now make a total total of discount cash bank and credit side discount cash and bank right whichever is higher but for the discount how much you'll get for credit side credit side total is 140 right 140 and debit side total is 140 right 140 for debit side and credit side 25 don't tally between the debit and credit side of discount so discount amount should be written how much you will get from debit and credit so now make a total of cash from the both the side debit and credit right whichever is higher so debit side total of cash is 9120 9120 credit side total of cash column is 5110 so debit cash is more so write 9120 both the side next find the total of bank both the side debit and credit side so here debit side total is 44060 44060 right both the side 44060 now find the difference between debit and credit cash and find the difference between debit and credit bank balance so the difference between cash is 4010 write the difference as by balance by balance carry down the difference between debit side of cash is 4010 and difference between bank is 36415 so this balance 36450 and 40000 then is carried on brought down for the next month that is december december 1st to balance to balance brought down 4010 and 36000 4010 and 36415 balance carried on should be brought down for the next month beginning so this all about three column cash book problem with solution so let's stop for the three column cash book and just continue with the next concept of your syllabus that is final accounts final accounts of a sole trader so this is the new concept according to your syllabus three column cash book is a separate concept and final accounts of a sole trader is a different concept let us start with the final accounts of a sole trader what is final account the trading and profit and loss account and balance sheet prepared by a businessman at the end of a trading period are collectively called final accounts or financial statement trading profit and loss account and balance sheet so this three trading and profit and loss account and balance sheet prepared by a businessman at the end of the period is collectively called final accounts so trading account profit and loss account and balance sheet is collectively called as final accounts now you are studying final accounts of a sole trader final accounts of a sole trader is different and final accounts of a company is different so let's start with sole trader first final account is collectively called statement of trading and profit and loss account and balance sheet is collectively called final account then what is trial balance before move on to the trading and profit and loss account meaning of trial balance a trial balance is a bookkeeping worksheet in which balance of all ledger are combined into debit and credit account column totals that are equal that means trial balance is a bookkeeping worksheet this is the balance of all the ledger account after journal entry we'll post them into ledger so the total of all the ledger will write in a bookkeeping worksheet the total of all the debit and credit is equal trial balance all the debit and credit is equal in trial balance you will record the total amount of all the ledger balance of all the ledger is right in the bookkeeping worksheet 
called trial balance it should be equal all the debit and credit items should be equal a company prepare a trial balance periodically usually at the end of every reporting period so usually the trial balance is prepared at the end of period the general purpose of producing trial balance is to ensure the entries in company's bookkeeping system is mathematically correct that means all the ledger is posted into trial balance so in order to check mathematically correct whether it is correct or not so in order to verify that you will record all the ledger balance in the trial balance trial balance all the debit and credit should be equal so this is all about trial balance the two important objective which accounting is adopted by every businessman are ascertainment of profit or loss made by his business during a given trading period and ascertainment of the financial position of the business as on a given date that means every businessman they will adopt accounting only to know the profit or loss to ascertain to find the profit or loss earned by the company during a particular period and to ascertain the financial position of a company to know the financial position of the company the two main objective of accounting is to ascertain the profit and to know the financial position so this final account that is trading and profit and loss account and balance sheet they fulfill the objective of accounting that means shows the profit or loss earned by the company and it shows the financial position of the concern trading and profit and loss account it gives the net profit and gross profit of the company that means ascertainment of profit or loss then balance sheet it shows the financial position of the concern so final accounts it fulfill the objectives of accounting next the meaning of trading account a trading account is an account which show the results of trading that is buying and selling of goods called gross profit or loss trading account means it shows the result of trading activity trading activity means buying and selling activity of the business it includes only the trading activity only buying and selling transaction here you will get transaction from the trading activity you will get the gross profit you will consider only the buying and selling activity buying and selling related activity in the trading account here you will get gross profit or gross loss it includes all the sales and purchase expenses and direct expenses any purchase return and direct expenses in trading account so here this is the results of trading activity like buying and selling then meaning of profit and loss account the term profit and loss statement refers to financial statement that summarizes the revenue cost and expenses incurred during a specific period usually a quarter or fiscal year that means the profit and loss statement which summarize the revenue cost expenses incurred during the period in profit and loss account you will consider all the revenue all the income and expenses and cost in the financial year and from this information you will find the net profit or loss from the trading account you will get the gross profit only the gross profit after this after trading account you will consider all the indirect expenses and indirect income and you will consider all the data and calculate the net profit or net loss this records provides information about a company ability or inability to generate profit by increasing revenue reducing cost or both this statements are often presented on a cash or accrual basis that means this statement profit and loss account shows the company's ability company's ability to increase the profit to generate the profit or to loss that means if the revenue is more and the cost that means the expenses are low it shows the profit company in the ability to generate the profit if the cost or the expenses is more and the revenue is less it is clear that company running in the loss so it give the net profit or net loss of the company profit and loss account it consider all the indirect expenses and indirect income that means cost and revenue and match with the income and revenues income and expenses and find the net profit or net loss this is all about profit and loss account next balance sheet the term balance sheet refers to 
financial statement that reports a company's assets, liability and shareholders equity at a specific point in time. That means the balance sheet is a financial statement. It shows the company's assets, liabilities and the shareholders equity in a single statement. It gives the financial position. It ascertain the financial position of the concern. The balance sheet is financial statement that provides a snapshot of what a company owes and owns as well as amount invested by shareholders. Balance sheet can be used with other important financial statement to conduct fundamental analysis and calculating financial ratios. That means it shows the company owns and owes. That means company assets and company's liability. How much the assets the company have and the total liability of the company. It shows shareholders equity. How much the shareholders equity and the liability and the assets the company have. It is clearly shows the financial position of the concern and it helps in further calculation or for conduct the fundamental analysis and calculate the financial ratios. Balance sheet is a financial statement. It shows the financial position of the concern. So this is all about trading, profit and loss account and balance sheet. Let's start with the format or proforma of trading account. In trading account, first we'll consider opening stock, then all the trading activity, buying and selling. Here, this is the debit side and credit side. So here, all the expenses and income. Here first, opening stock, that means the previous year closing stock become the opening stock for the particular year. So opening stock, then purchase, purchase amount. If any purchase return, deduct from the purchase and amount in outer column. Then all the direct expenses. Direct expenses include carriage, invert, freight, octroy, dock duties, excise duty, royalty, motive powers, coal, gas, water, then factory expenses, that is factory rent, all these are direct expenses. After considering all the expenses, just move to the income or first consider sales. If any sales return, just deduct it from the sales and amount in outer column. Then closing stock. After recording all the direct income and expenses, just make a total and find the difference. If the income if the income is more than the expense, then it is gross profit. If the income is more, then it is gross profit. If the expenses are more, if the expenses is more than income, then it is gross loss. So, to find the gross profit or gross loss, we will consider all the indirect income and indirect expenses. That means trading activity. After finishing trading account, in the same statement only, we will continue with the profit and loss account. The format for the profit and loss account is same particular amount and debit side and credit side. This is all the expenses, debit side all the expenses and credit side all the income. But here you will consider all the indirect expenses and in the credit side you will consider all the indirect income. So in the trading account, direct expenses and direct income and here indirect expenses and indirect income. In trading account, if you earn gross loss, you will get gross loss. It should be brought down for the debit side. Here, gross loss carried down should be brought down for the profit and loss account debit side and gross profit carried down, gross profit carried down should be brought down for the credit side. Gross profit should be brought down for the credit side. Gross loss should be brought down for the debit side. Next consider all the indirect expenses like salary, office rent, taxes, printing and stationery, telephone expenses, postage and telegram, discount allowed, insurance, audit fee, electricity charges, repairs and renewals, depreciations, advertisement, carriage, outward, bad debt, provision for bad debt, selling commission, bank charges, interest on loan, loss on sale of assets. All these are 
indirect expenses consider all the indirect expenses in the debit side and all the indirect income in credit side like discount received commission received bank interest rent received dividend on shares interest earned on debenture profit on sale of assets all the indirect income in credit side after recording all the indirect income and expenses just make a total and find the difference same if the expense is more than the income then it is net loss if the income is more than the expenses it is net profit so in order to know the net profit or net loss will prepare profit and loss account this is the format of profit and loss account next format of balance sheet balance sheet of xyz company the company name as on 31st march or 31st december for the particular year liabilities and assets all the liability like sundry creditors bills payable bank overdraft outstanding expenses mortgage loans then reserve funds capital consider capital write in the inner column then if the net profit add with capital in profit and loss account if you get net profit if you get net profit add the net profit if it is net loss just deduct net profit is to be add and net loss should be deducted so add net profit deduct net loss then less drawings drawings means personal withdrawals drawings you need to deduct then income tax income tax you need to deduct the final amount in the outer column consider all the liability then assets cash in hand cash at bank bills receivable bills payable is the liability and bills receivable assets then sundry debtors investments closing stock prepaid expenses furniture and fittings plant and machinery land and building business premises patents and trademark goodwill all this is assets so assets and liabilities balance sheet should be tallied so you need to get both the side same amount so assets and liability should be equal so if you are getting equal or the same amount then your problem is correct so this is all about the format of balance sheet trading and profit and loss account in today's session we learn three column cash book and next to concept final accounts of a sole trader meaning of final accounts then trial balance trading account profit and loss account then balance sheet then format of all the trading profit and balance sheet so in the next session let's continue with the problem let's start with first problem on final accounts of a sole trader before moving to the problem you need to be perfect with this format you should be able to identify whether it is a trading activity or whether this item comes under trading account or profit and loss account or it is a balance sheet item or assets or liability you should be able to differentiate you need to classify between the trading profit and balance sheet this is the format of profit and loss trading then balance sheet so this all about today's session let's continue with the next session until then keep watching thank you